Hi there, this is Chris from Moto Legends, the chap in the cap, here today to talk to you about single layer jeans. Single layer because we think they are so much nicer to wear than Aramid lined or Kevlar lined jeans. Now, Kevlar jeans or Aramid line jeans have been around for about 30 years. And indeed, it was about 30 years ago that I bought my first pair. I sent off to America for them. I think the brand was called Shoshone. I was very excited. Uh, I thought they were amazing. However, when I look back, they are frankly embarrassing. Um, the legs were about this wide. They had stitch lines all over them. They were super baggy. The Kevlar was this thick, it meant you couldn't walk around in them. So I bought a pair of jeans because I thought they looked really cool. I thought I looked super fly, but basically I couldn't walk around in them. They were, in retrospect, horrid. Luckily, protective jeans have come a long way in that intervening 30 years. And now some of the line jeans on the market are pretty amazing. They look just like a regular jean. I think one of our favorites would be the Resurgence Cafe Racer jean. It's a selvedged um, denim jean. It's got a lining of a material called Pekev, which is a form of, of Aramid weave, like Kevlar, obviously, but it's thinner, it's incredibly protective, but you wouldn't know it was a protective gene. Now, protective genes all work in the same way. Basically, you've got an outer layer of denim, and then you have a lining of whatever the material is, a Kevlar, as I've said, or an Aramid weave of some sort. The denim is just a shop denim. If you go down on the road, that does nothing. That's going to tear. That doesn't provide any abrasion resistance or any strength at all. It's the, it's the lining, it's the Kevlar lining that's going to give you abrasion resistance, puncture resistance, or tear resistance. And these jeans work to an extent. Now, the extent to which they work is going to depend on how much of the area of the jean is covered with this lining. In some jeans, you get 100% lining, and those jeans work particularly well because wherever you land, you've got the protection of the Kevlar. But many jeans out there have linings that are far less comprehensive than that. So there are jeans out there that have got a 10 or 20% layer of Kevlar beneath them. So you buy a jean thinking that you're buying something that's awfully protective, whereas in fact, you've got a little slither maybe around the bum, you've got a little bit of bound down, down the legs, but you end up with a jean that is actually not particularly good. But there's a problem with all lined jeans, and that is that, frankly, they're lined. Now, in the winter, that might be a benefit even because the lining can act as a windproof barrier so that if you're riding along on a cold day, the air can't pass through, through the denim, they will keep you warm. But frankly, most of us buy a jean to ride in the summer. And in the summer, a line jean is not particularly nice to wear. 100% jeans are going to be the worst kind of jeans, but when it's hot, when the temperatures get up into the higher 20s, certainly into the 30s, you're going out in what is effect, in effect, a padded trouser. It's not nice to ride in. So 100% line jeans are the worst, but even a 60% line jean where you've got the lining around the bum and all the way down the front of the legs, it's going to be uncomfortable to wear. So the answer, is what we call these days a single layer jean, which has its strength from a material that's woven into the outer denim and it has no lining at all. I'm gonna go on now and talk about those jeans in a little bit more detail. So, as I mentioned, single layer jeans are made differently. Instead of a lining that gives you your strength and abrasion resistance, you weave a stronger fiber into the cotton to create a single layer, one material that is stronger than denim on its own. So at the lower end of the market, at the cheaper end of the market, as it were, you've got what is called a cotton cordura gene, whereby you take the cotton in one direction. So when you're weaving a material, you've got two directions. You've got the weave and the weft. With a cotton cordura gene, you might have cotton in the weave and then cordura in the weft. It creates a gene that is substantially stronger than a standard denim jean that you might buy in the shop, but it's not the highest level of protection that you'll find in a single layer jean. If we move slightly more towards a more technical, stronger jean, you will take a material, a carbon steel type material, something that is known as a UHMWPE. That's an ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. I've got no idea what that means, but it's super strong. 
You then take that material and you wrap cotton around it. You can do that in both the weave and the weft, or you can do it in the weave and then a standard cotton in the weft, or you might then take a cotton um, and put an elastic material around it so that you're creating a bit of stretch in the jean. But however it's done, we are creating a fabric that looks and feels like normal denim, but which offers far superior levels of abrasion resistance. So the end product is something like this. It's a material that frankly doesn't look any different to a street jean. If you get a high quality street jean, a Japanese denim, a uh, 14 ounce denim, it doesn't feel any heavier than, th than this. Yet this particular jean gives you levels of abrasion resistance that are 50% stronger than leather. Now I know if you're an old school biker, if you've come up through the ranks, you've had sports bikes, you've been used to wearing leather, you believe that it's only leather that offers the highest levels of abrasion resistance. Um, I understand that, but things have moved on. We've now managed to develop fabrics that are stronger than the arse of a cow. That shouldn't perhaps surprise us, but a jean like this, 50% stronger than leather. Now, we actually measure the strength of a jean by uh, reference to what we call a Cambridge machine. In some ways, the Cambridge machine is slightly old fashioned technology these days because it applies to the old CE regulations, the EN 13595 regulations. Now, they have now been surpassed by a new set of rules, but the machine that they used to measure the strength of a fabric is still used, and a lot of the gene manufacturers are using it these days to enable them to show just how strong that their genes are. Now, the Cambridge machine, which was the machine that they used in those tests, it's a very simple device. It's a rolling sanding belt, and that's meant to simulate a moving road. You then have um, an arm of some sort with a, um, a piece of cloth on the end, a piece of cloth, a piece of material, denim leather. You lower it down onto the sanding belt, and it's how long it takes that material to wear through that gives us a garment's slide time. So if you bring it down, if it takes two seconds for that to wear through, we've got a two second slide time or a four or a six or an eight or a 10. So that's how we measure jeans today. Anyway, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go on and I'm going to talk through about half a dozen different pairs of jeans we've got. I've got my young Lochinvar Billy in today. He's gonna to model the jeans, but we're gonna look at them all. We're gonna look at the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, we're just gonna talk a little bit more about them just to give you an idea as to the array, the range of single layer jeans that are already out there on the market. So this is the J and Tracker from Spiddy. It's a jean that's been on the market forever. As I mentioned before, I'm not sure whether Spiddy actually invented the single layer jean, but this jean has been around for as long as I can remember. It's still a fabulous jean. It's a mix of cotton and cordura. It creates a slide time of just over two seconds. Now, in the world of jeans, that's not great because we have jeans with two, four, six, eight, and 10 seconds. So this is at the lower end of the market. But I would say that it's a jean that if you had an accident at 50 to 60 miles an hour, it would be more than fine. So if you're the kind of guy, maybe you've got a Harley Davidson, you've got a Triumph Bonneville, you tend to go out on a Sunday morning, you're pottering about, this is a gene that's going to give you certainly sufficient levels of abrasion resistance. And if the alternative, for example, is a pair of Levi's, you are 10 times safer in these genes. What we should also bear in mind, this gene is actually rated A under the new regulations. Now, Spiddy, in their wisdom, if they had elected to put hip armor in these genes, they come as standard with knee armor only, if they put hip armor in, they would have been rated AA. So these genes are strong enough in terms of their abrasion resistance and other qualities to be AA rated genes. And I go back again to a point that I think I've made before, that AA is the highest level that you can get on any textile trouser in the market. So whilst this sits at the lower level of abrasion resistance in terms of the jeans market, it's up there with your average trouser from a Furigan, from a Spiddy, from a Dainese, from an Alpenstars and so on. So it is not a poor man's product. It's a very easy product. It's a very lightweight product. Sits at the lower end of abrasion resistance, but more than enough for many riders. In terms of wearing the jean itself, immensely comfortable. These are probably amongst the lightest jeans we sell, uh, equivalent perhaps to the PMJs. So nice and easy to wear all, all day. Um, armor's particularly nice on these jeans. Billy, I'm gonna get you to, to stand up. No, um, what's nice about these jeans, they have an armor pocket here. There's a degree of adjustability, which is nice, but what it means is that if you are going out somewhere, when you get to your destination, 
you can just take the armor out and then you've got a, a pair of jeans with no armor in. We really like this armor, not a D3O, um, but it's flat armor, so when you're walking around, it doesn't shape around your knee, it's really comfortable. When it's on the bike, even if it's slightly out of position, it just bends around your knee. So it's a really comfortable um, piece of armor. So priced at 150 pounds, there's no single layer jean that's really um, comparable to, to it. I think there's a tendency to think that you've got to have a six second slide time, an eight second slide time, even a four second slide time. But for many of us, that's not necessary. I have a pair of these and if I'm going up to Newland's Corner for a bacon sandwich, this is the jean that I prefer to wear. It's probably the nicest to wear of all the jeans that, that we have. We'll just say one thing. I mentioned um, in some of the other, other jeans how where the seam is, it takes the armor on the inside. These jeans have a gusset that runs down around the crotch. It means that they've managed to bring the seams out. The armor sits in absolutely the right place. So this is a jean that's properly thought, thought through, easy to buy into, protection enough for many riders. It's a fabulous jean. So this jean is the Roka Tech jean from Roka. Now Roka is a super cool Swiss company run by two young guys, Michael and Kai. They're about as hip as it gets in the motorcycle apparel business. They did not invent single layer jeans. Don't know who did invent single layer jeans, but I know that Spiddy have been making their cotton cordura jeans for years and years. What Roka did, however, I think was they were the first company to make single layer respectable. They created jeans with a slide time that matched and exceeded leather. So they were the first people who really put single layer on the map as a truly protective jean that you could wear on the motorbike. Rokatex are made with a material called Armolith. Armolith is a French material, um, super strong, delivers a slide time of about 6.3 seconds, so 50% stronger than leather. Really easy to wear. They're not as light or as easy, one has to say, as the cotton cordura jeans from Spiddy or even the Toiron jeans from PMJ, but you could still wear them all day. Here in the shop, we often ride into the shop in these jeans. We wear them all day. We don't give them a second thought. So they're not in any way an uncomfortable jean. Billy here is wearing um, the light wash jean, which actually is a, a colorway or a wash that's exclusive to Moto Legends, but there are lots of different washes. And here is where it gets a little bit confusing if you're looking for a pair of jeans. They have four different fits. They have three different colorways. I think I got that the wrong way around. I think there are three different fits. There are four colorways. There are 22 waist sizes and there are up to four leg lengths. That's pretty confusing. In total, it leads to a situation where there are more than 200 SKUs across the Rokotech range. Now, the problem is not many retailers carry all of those SKUs. In fact, none of them do. We are the only people here because we are massive Roka fans. We keep them all here. Doesn't mean we won't occasionally sell out of one style in one color in a, in a leg length or, or a waist size, but we hold all of the Roka jeans in stock. There's a reason why with this jean, it seems to us that it's particularly important to have them fitted. You can buy these on the internet, you can buy them from us, you can buy them from other people, you can take potluck. But there is a single problem or singular problem with these jeans that means that you will benefit from someone who really knows how to fit them. And it's the armor pockets. In their wisdom, Roka have decided to give this jean in fact, we know why. It means that they can do it in a lower profile way. They have a fixed armor pocket. Normally in a jean, if you want a variable armor pocket, you have to have some kind of lining hanging down. With this jean, it's a fixed pocket and it means that it can just be taped into place. It makes the jean lighter and easier to wear, easy to get in and out of. The problem is, if your knee is not where Roka think your knee should be, then you end up with a situation where the armor doesn't work properly. Now, this is the armor we use. It's not actually the armor that Roka recommend. They recommend D3O, but they have the armor with um, shapes across it. It can create an ugly uh, white patch in the jean once, once they've been worn. So we prefer to use this D3O armor. But I can tell here from where the line is on this jean, if Billy would put these jeans on, he'd have the armor there. That's not where we want the armor. We want it to be sat there. That's the perfect place. Uh, it's designed and shaped, shaped to go around the knee. We want the top of the armor to, to be about there. 
that would be where it needs to be. The problem is because it's fixed, the only way to get the armor in the correct position is to take the jean, unsew the armor pocket, unsew the, the seams, move the armor pocket up an inch or down an inch to get it into the right place. Come and see us at Moto Legends in Guildford and we will do that if necessary. It's not, it's not necessary with everybody, but I would say in at least 50% of cases, we do need, need to move the, the knee armor. Other retailers, I don't know whether they do it. I don't think so. I've not come across anyone else that are doing it, but we do lots of these every week. We're pretty skilled at it. We merely, we measure where the armor is, we measure where it should be, and then we just take a measure there. It needs to come down to two inches. It needs to go up an inch. The other feature that you just need to be aware about in this gene, it's not a fold. It's actually a, um, a feature of many genes. The way genes are made, the seams are not symmetrical once you're sat on the bike. So the outer seam is here and the inner seam is here. So that's not in that position. That means that when you put armor on in this gene and in many other genes, it sits on the inside. That's not perfect in our view. It would be better in any motorcycle gene or trouser if the armor were to sit on the outside. Because let's face it, you don't need protection down the inside of the leg. We need it here more. When you put the armor in these jeans, it does sit a little bit on the inside. Your knee's protected, so if, if you hit this, then fine, it's going to work. But on the side, it's a wee bit exposed. You just need to know that because if you try a pair on um, and you find that the armor sits on the outside, there's not a fault with your pair of jeans. That's just the way these jeans are. They are, or have been, our favorite jeans. They are super expensive. They are 350 pounds. That didn't used to include armor. It does include armor now. So that is beyond the reach of some people, but these are fantastic jeans to wear. You put them on, they just, it's one of those products, they feel that like a glove. You can put on cheaper jeans, you can put on any of our other jeans, but a lot of people put these on and just go, yes, these are the jeans I want to wear. They're superbly made, they're protective, they're comfortable, they're expensive you're gonna to have to make your choice. But if you wanna get these jeans bang on, best maybe to set your sat nav for GU3 1LU, come and see us and we'll make sure they fit you properly. So here Billy is wearing the McCann jean from Helvarsons. Now, we love the Helvarsons brand. It's high-end functionality at mid-market prices. They produce some great gear. They're not the world's top jean maker. This is their first attempt at a single layer jean. It's a valiant attempt, but it's not our favorite jean, one has to say. It's made from a Kevlar weave. So it's the only jean that we know of where you've, you're using Kevlar as part of the weave. It ends up making a jean that's a little bit thicker than most. It's still a single layer jean, so it's still gonna flow the air better than a Kevlar jean, than a line jean, but it's heavier than most of the jeans out there. Um, it fits a little bit, more baggily than most. If we were being rude, we'd call this a, um, a dad fit. Um, Billy is, is pretty skinny. They don't look too, much too bad, but as the sizes go up, they do get a little bit kind of baggy in, in fit. So if you're someone who wants that, then this may be the gene for you. This may be the only gene that, that works on you in some instances, but it is not the most flattering gene out there. It is, however, a very protective gene. Given the way how Varsons work, everything's got to be bolted down, um, belt and braces, it's got to be done that properly. This is an AAA rated gene, so the highest level that you can get under the latest EN 17092 regulations. Now, we don't technically have a slide time for this, but one can be pretty sure that it's gonna be a four second plus slide time. We know that to reach that highest level, the abrasion resistance measure is going to be around four seconds. So it's a very protective gene. It comes with level two armor, a standard in the hips and the knees. It's not the nicest armor. Again, Helvarsons, fantastic company, but they tend to do things in a slightly more traditional, slightly clunky way. The armor's not the nicest. Um, the gene also has a full lining. At times, it could not be the easiest gene to get in and out of. So. I'm not wanting to be any rude about this gene than I've been already. It does a great job. It's a very protective gene. It works really well on some people, um, but it's at the heavier, thicker end uh, and the slightly baggier end of the single layer gene market. So this is the J and Dyneema gene from Spiddy. Spiddy do two single layer genes, Cotton Cordura J Tracker, slide time of two seconds. This is the J and Dyneema made as you might expect 
with a material called Dyneema. This gene records a slide time of a little bit over four seconds. So leather levels of protection, it's priced at 180 pounds. So it's kind of in the middle of the market. So I think in terms of value and what it delivers, it's bang on. They call it a black jean. If you get really close, it's a very, very dark blue. It's quite a slim fit. It's got some stretch in, so they're pretty comfortable. Comes as standard. Um, it's a, a double A rated jean, by the way, but it comes as standard with hip and knee armor. The knee armor is suspended in pockets. It's not, it's got a kind of semi or half mesh lining. Doesn't make these jeans the most comfortable to get in and out of in terms of the speed of, of entry and, and egress, as it were. But once you've got used to them, they're fine. But it's a, it's a fabulous jean. Now, one thing that I've got to say about a Dyneema, it is a strong material. You may remember in the intro, I spoke about a UHM WPE. Dyneema is a UHM WPE. There's a brand out there at present that is claiming to have a Dyneema gene that records a slide time of over six seconds. I've got to say, that's just baloney. It is not possible in our view and in our experience. This is a brand that claims to have the world's strongest denim, unbreakable denim. I've got to say that that's just marketing speak and in the world of the internet, it's very difficult to monitor claims like that. I just do not believe them. The brand I'm talking about actually doesn't have their genes CE certified at all. So technically they shouldn't legally be sold in Europe at all. So even if they did have an impressive slide time, those genes have not been tested for all the other criteria that are important in a modern protective genes, so they won't have had any tear resistance, burst resistance, puncture resistance tests going on. But just be, I suppose, a little bit careful out there. There are a lot of people talking the talk about single layer genes or genes in general, and it can't all be believed. If we say that a product has a 4.1 second slide time, it's only because I have a certificate here in the building, we have checked it. We will not make wild claims. So this is a great gene. It's a Dyneema gene. If someone says they've got a Dyneema gene that's got much higher levels of protection, just be a little bit wary. So this is the Roka Revolution gene. It's pretty special. In fact, it's just unique. There are people out there who would have you believe that they make waterproof genes. And what they've got is a denim gene, maybe a Kevlar line gene, and then they have a waterproof membrane. Those genes really just don't work because what happens in the rain, water's gonna soak into the outer fabric, which is standard in any motorcycle garment, but then the Kevlar will soak the rain in. They will get very heavy. That will become very itchy, very uncomfortable. Those jeans were just unbearable to wear in anything but the very lightest of downpour. These are a waterproof gene, but they are a totally different kind of waterproof gene. Firstly, they're a single layer gene. So as a gene, um, it's pretty smart. It's a light wash. It has a 3.1 second slide time, which again, I think is pretty impressive. But the most unique thing about these genes is that they have a laminated waterproof membrane. So I'm sure some of you know the difference between a drop liner and a laminated membrane. A laminated membrane is stuck onto the inner surface of a gene, of a, of a fabric. So that's what you get if you want to spend 1,200 pounds on a rucker jacket, you've got a laminated membrane. Because it's laminated onto the outer fabric, water can't get in, you stay drier for longer, the product will dry up much faster. You can, you can ride for four, five, six hours in a laminated product and you will not get wet. And to that extent, in that respect, these jeans are amazing. You can ride all day in these jeans and you will not get wet. There are a couple of tiny points of potential water ingress, but really they are almost insignificant. One of them is that the waist belt here does not have a membrane, so that can get a wee bit damp in heavy rain. And if water were to enter the pocket, you can get a few spots on your un underpants. But as a product, they are fantastic. There is a downside. There are a couple of downsides to these jeans, which you need to be made aware of. Because they have a waterproof membrane, they are not wonderful to wear. They're not particularly nice to wear in hot conditions. So in our view, these are a kind of spring, early summer, autumn jean. You can wear them into the winter, but they're not going to be the warmest product you've ever worn unless you put some kind of lining and merino legging underneath them. But what happens is if you're in the upper 20s, lower 30s, and you're sweating, you've got the membrane rubbing up and down at your legs. You are generating sweat 
potentially at a level that the membrane cannot cope with, these genes can, we, can be a wee bit hot and sticky. You can mitigate that a little bit by wearing a fine mesh base layer, Halvarsons do one that works really well, it's a 20 pounds base layer, so that ameliorates the situation somewhat, but it has to be said that these genes are more about cooler climates than about warmer climates. Back when these first came out, we all rode in these all over Europe. They were so light. In comparison with most motorcycle trousers, we thought they were great. But once we got into single layer jeans, once Roker brought out their Rokatex, we realized that this had a weakness. It wasn't as good in the summer. So the ideal scenario for someone who just wants the best of everything is to have a pair of these for the winter, then you'll have a pair of Rokatex jeans for the summer. The fit is a little bit loose, it's a little bit wide. They do fit very exact. So if you're a 32 inch, you will not get into a 31 inch. You've got to be very realistic about your size. Come in a large number of SKUs. These are our um, Rokotech boxes here. That's pretty much the extent of the range. Um, so there are a lot of SKUs and again, not many retailers carry those. So if you really want to find the right size for you because there's 20 odd waist lengths and there's four different leg lengths. If you want to get it right, you should come and see us in Guildford. As with the Rokatex, there is an issue to do with the armor pockets. Because this is a waterproof jean and because it's just the way that Roker like to do it, it's a fixed armor pocket. There's a piece of tape here that keeps the armor in place. So that keeps the pocket in place. It means that the armor cannot be removed. The armor pocket cannot be moved. The problem is this. If your knee is not where Roker think your knee should be, we have a problem. The armor is not going to work. What we do here, and we've done hundreds of pairs of these, we get you on the bike, we sit you on the bike, we work out where the armor should be and where it is. We measure how far it is up or down. We then unsew the jeans. We move the armor pocket. We retape them. We never have any problems with this, but it takes a while to do. It can take us a few days, but as far as I know, no other retailer is offering that as a service. So if you like the idea of these jeans and want them to work properly, then you need to come and see us in Guildford. We'll sit, sit you on the bike. We'll make sure it all, all works. So an amazing jean, fairly decent levels of abrasion resistance, light to wear, a bit sweaty in the summer, 350 pounds, including armor. Um, that's up to you. If what you're looking for is a truly waterproof jean, then there's nothing like it. In fact, there just is nothing. These are the ones it wants to go for. Right, so this gene is from Canadian maker Resurgence. Now, Resurgence do Kevlar 9 genes as well, or their material is actually known as Pekev. It's their own Aramid weave. Before they got into single layer genes, this is their new single layer gene called the New Wave. They had the world's strongest line gene. This, however, is even stronger than that gene. So this gene has a slide time of, it's an unbelievable 10 seconds. So that's about two and a half strong, times stronger than leather. Um, so it's more than you're ever going to need. Our view actually is if you've got a four second slide time, four seconds is about leather. That's more than you're ever going to need on the road. You're not going to wear through a pair of leather trousers on the road. You're certainly not going to wear through a pair of jeans that has a four second slide time. So 10 seconds is showing off a wee bit. If you're someone, if you're ultra cautious and you just want the most protective jean out there, this is it, it's the new wave. In terms of the way it fits, um, it's a raw finish. It's slightly wider, it has to be said, than some jeans. Some of our jeans are quite slim, a slim fit. Um, they don't look too bad on, on Billy here, but it's a slightly more a generous fit. Um, but again, even though it's heavier than some of the jeans, I think this is a bit heavier than the Roka Rokatech jeans, it's still easy to wear, but you could wear them all day. Comes with armor, um, D3O armor in the knees and the hips, standard within the price. These jeans are priced at 300 pounds. So not the most expensive jeans on the market, but they're kind of up there. They're at the upper end of the market. As we're recording this in January 2020, I happen to know if you see this video as soon as it goes out, that these are out of stock. Resurgence have got a whole new bunch of garments coming through. They'll be with us by February, March. They will be C approved garments, whereas this version, which has been around for a couple of years, is not C approved. So if this is the gene you want, you may be in for a little wait. We have some of these in stock from the old regime, but the new ones will be in shortly. But a fantastic gene. It does not get more protective, more abrasion resistant than the Resurgence new wave. Now this is a particularly impressive 
pair of jeans. They're made by Italian maker PMJ. We are pretty chuffed with them because we had a hand in the making of these jeans. Middle of 2019, PMJ came over from Italy to see us to show us their range of line jeans. We looked at them and said, I'm sorry, we're not really interested in any of them. The world has moved on from line jeans. We're only interested in a single layer jean. They asked us for our spec. We gave them the spec. This is that gene. It's come through in early 2020. It's a pretty amazing bit of kit. Let me just talk you through it. So it's single layer. Um, they have their own fabric that is part of the weave into the denim. It's called Tuaron. Suits super strong, works incredibly well. Creates a gene that is very, very light. In terms of the feel of these jeans, they're pretty much the same as a cotton cordura jean. That's at the lighter, easier to wear end of the market. You could wear these jeans all day and not know that you were wearing a protective motorcycle jean. That having been said, they are impressively strong. We asked PMJ, we said, if you want a, an entry into, into this market, we need something that's a little bit stronger than a cotton cordura jean. We want something that's up there that can be measured against leather, so something with about a four second slide time. These jeans have come through. They've got a 4.1 second slide time. Impressively, they're also AAA rated. So as I've mentioned before, there's no such thing as a textile trouser from any manufacturer, from Rucker, from Halvarsons, from Furigan, from Spiddy. Nobody makes a textile trouser that has a rating of above AA. So AAA is reserved only for leather garments and the best at denim jeans. So as a product, this is right up there in terms of levels of protection. In terms of armor, it comes with uh, a standard with hips and knees. It's not a D3O, it's a super soft armor. In fact, it feels softer than D3O. It has a certain amount of adjustability, so we don't have a problem getting the armor in the right place with these. Um, may sound like one detail is too far, but it's a zip fly. One of the things that we asked PMJ to do was a zip fly. We have a lot of people who buy Roka jeans who don't like the button fly, so we asked them specifically to do a zip fly on this jean. It's quite a narrow fit, so it's not gonna work on everybody. Um, Billy here is a bit of a skinny runt, so he kind of gets, gets away with it. But if you've got rugby player thighs, these jeans are not gonna work for you. The most amazing part of this jean, in a way, is the price. Again, we asked them to come in at a price that was somewhere between Rokers at the top and the Spiddy um, J Trackers at the bottom. We asked them for a 200 pound price point. These jeans are actually 230 pounds, but that includes a leather belt. Is 30 pounds excessive for a leather belt? I don't think so. So in effect, they managed to come in on budget. This is a 200 pound jean. Um, looks really smart. You could wear them all day. Leather levels of abrasion resistance. Really, I don't think there's much more you could ask for. You've got a high-end single layer jean here for the same price as a, albeit a nice line jean, but with all the benefits that single layer are going to bring you. So this is the jean that we think in some ways is gonna change perceptions of single layer. It's a very impressive jean, and if you want us to try them on, come and see us. Okay, so that was our walk through all of the best single layer jeans for 2020. This is the beginning of 2020. We're recording this in January 2020. And those, in our view, represent the best single layer jeans on the market. Obviously, this is a market that's growing fast. So over the course of the year, there may be new arrivals, new launches. We will tell you about those when they arrive with us. But for our part, moving forward, I think we're very unlikely to take on any Kevlar line jeans. They just feel like, yes, it is technology. We may make an exception. We may make an exception for Resurgence's Cafe Racer because it's such a beautiful silvered denim that some people want it because of the quality of the denim. But by and large, we will be a single layer only company in the future. In the ladies market, it's a wee bit different. We will have line jeans because single layer is not quite as developed for women's jeans as it is for men's jeans. We have developed a fantastic high-waisted ladies jean with Roka. It's amazing, it's expensive, it's six second slide time. Um, and if you really wanna go sit single layer, you should come and see us and look at that. There are some others. There's a nice single layer jean from um, Pando Moto and we're working on a single layer gene, a high-waisted gene from PMJ. So over the course of the year, I think the situation is going to improve, but right now we have a number of lightly lined 
jeans as well for, for ladies, um, and our range of single layers is not quite what we would like it to be. That will change. Anyway, we hope you've enjoyed our little walk through the single layer jean market. If you would like to know more about these jeans, look at them in detail, check the sizes and availability and so on, then visit www.motolegends.com. Our guys have created a, um, a collection of all of our single layer jeans. So if you go to the button top right and click on there, that will take you to our single layer collection for men and for ladies. If you would like to receive our email bulletins ongoing, and uh, that's one of the best ways of keeping in touch with new launches and what's going on and new products as they arrive into the building. Then you can go onto the front page of the website. At the top of the page, there's a new letter sign up um, button. If you click on there, it takes a couple of seconds. You can get all of our bulletins in the future. If, however, you would prefer to get your information videographically like this, we would be simply delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. And you can do that bottom right. I've mentioned with regard to a couple of the products, the benefits of coming in to see us in Guildford. Jeans really are our thing. We think we do a better job than most retailers. If you come in here and try on a pair of jeans, nobody leaves until those jeans work. We will do whatever it takes to make sure that the armor's in the right place. We will do that at our cost. So if we have to remove that armor pocket on a pair of brokers and move it up or down, that's our cost, not yours. We will get you on the bike in a pair of your boots or a pair of boots from here that look like your boots. We will find the right length. We will hem the jeans to the right length. And again, we will do that at our cost. So if you come and see us for jeans here, we will make sure that you don't leave until those jeans are absolutely correct. We are obviously based in Guildford. You can find all the details on the website. Anyway, this has been a long one today. I so I'm hope I've not bored you too much to death. Um, but this has been Chris at Moto Legends. We hope to talk to you again soon.